this time, let's start with the table of friends. In case you did not have me last year, you might have missed that class. Dimensions are your friends. And in order to keep track of your friends, sometimes you might have a lot of them. For example, you will in this class. This is first semester. So we're going to have a lot of friends. We like to keep track of them on our table of friends. So this is, we're going to begin it today. We'll continue to add to it until, um, I don't know, April. All right. The table of friends. We have, I believe there are 11 here. Uh, and there's one that we haven't actually talked about yet, but it fits well with the other things. So uh, I've listed all of the names. And as I call on you, just simply give me something to add, the symbol included or equation for any one of these. Katie, in the back. For anything? Anything. Um, relative error if the acceptance value of minus the um, It's actually O minus A divided by A times 100. Well, what does the O stand for, class? Observed value. And the A? Accepted value. OK. More stuff. Uh, Carol. Um, the acceptance value of minus the um, displacement is delta x. The symbol for displacement is delta x. Neglect. Yes. Anything. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to stop you. You guys are extremely slow. Look at how many different things you can choose from. Come on, people. we got a lot to do. Heather. Plus C is V. Lowercase V. Sam. Uh, speed is S. Uh, usually, I'm just going to put speed there. We don't really use speed all that much, so I don't really have a symbol for it. Andrew. Uh, relative error is a capital E with the R as a subscript. Great. Uh, Sarah. Velocity is meters per second. Great dimensions for velocity meters per second. Show me. Uh, this meters, are meters, per second. meters. We're going to do everything in base SI dimensions, but clearly they could be other things as well. Who will be? Um, force is in newtons. Force is in newtons. What is a newton? J. Um, kilograms times meters per second squared. Kilograms times meters all divided by seconds squared. More stuff. Um, uh, speed is in meters per second. Again, meters per second. Evan. Um, so acceleration is meters per second squared. Riku. Force is capital F. Capital F. There are all sorts of different ones, but the capital F is most common. Emily Acceleration is lowercase. Lowercase a, capital A is uh, M2 if there's Bob. Uh, relative error in units is percent. It is a percentage. Back. Um, velocity is change in displacement over change in time. It is not the change in displacement over change in time. Or it is displacement over. It is the change in position over change in time, or the displacement over change in time. So that x means position. The delta x means the um, change in position. I am going to put a little symbol over the V, Sydney. this means. Vector. The velocity is a vector. Actually, so force is vector as well. Um, Sigurelli? Um, displacement is... Uh, Equation. Yeah. Uh, displacement equals uh, final position minus initial position. Okay. I'm just going to put the distance over time, so it's a total distance over the total time. <coughs> oh. yes. uh, the equation for arc length is radius times theta. Ah, we don't have a symbol for arc length yet. It's s, and I use a lowercase cursive s simply because my s is so terrible that it looks like a 5, and you will not confuse my lowercase cursive s with anything else. Um, David? Um, our length is in radians? It is in radians? <clears throat> oh, 
was my name. Um, Michelle. Uh, the, what was that? Force is uh, mass times uh, acceleration. So you're telling me force equals mass times acceleration? It's interesting. Evan, you believe that? Uh, vector of force equals mass times vector of acceleration. I think we're closer. I'm feeling closer, Goolsby. The net force? The net force <laughs> is equal to mass times acceleration, where both force and acceleration are vectors. Uh, all right. Change in velocity. Change in velocity over change in time. What else? Um, look. Tangential velocity is v sub t. V sub t for tan. Oops, put on the wrong. V sub t for tangential velocity. Plan. The units for tangential velocity is meters per second. Meters per second. Isha. Tangential acceleration is a sub t. A sub t. Tangential tangential acceleration. Justin F. Birthday. Um. Centripetal acceleration is A sub C. Class, the word centripetal means? <laughs> Center seeking. Centripetal acceleration accepts acceleration inward. Uh, Stephanie? Um, centripetal force is F. It is the net force in the in direction. The centripetal force, I use this as the symbol for centripetal force specifically because it does not have a symbol. It is simply the net force in the in direction is the centripetal force. Carlo? Um, tangential acceleration equals, or no, centripetal acceleration equals tangential velocity squared over r. Over r, <coughs> the radius. It also equals, we might as well put this on here as well. What, Sam? Um, that other equation. Yes, that other one. Heather, how much? Um, change. Sorry. Um, That's okay. It also equals, uh, Carol? Omega, the radius times the angle of velocity squared. We haven't defined the angle of velocity yet, but we might as well put it up there. Yeah, that's, that's not right. Um, <laughs> Good. You got to pay attention, people. We have one of these that was wrong. Sydney, say it again. The units on should be It is a length, so it is in meters. Any sort of linear item. Uh, let's see. We have more. Sam. It's not r omega squared, is it? It's not. What is it? It's not omega, isn't it? No, r omega is something different. No, it's not. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> Tangential velocity is r omega. Tangential velocity equals r times omega. Connie? Um, so It is in meters per second squared tangential acceleration. Sydney again. Um, the units for centripetal force. It is also in newtons. I'm not going to put it down again. But it's kilograms times meters per second squared. That would be redundant. Sure. Um, centripetal acceleration is meters per second. Notice centripetal acceleration and tangential acceleration both have the same dimensions as meters per second squared. What is a major difference between centripetal acceleration and tangential acceleration? Please, Stephanie. Part of inward velocity squared over the direction. The tangential acceleration is tangent to the circle. The centripetal acceleration is inward. They're very different things. We have two left. Rebecca? Um, centripetal force is that force inward equals mass times the centripetal. Great. Technically, we actually have two left. I'm going to put two equations for the tangential acceleration. Benedict? Um, tangential acceleration. It doesn't remember it. That's okay. Tangential acceleration. We haven't worked with it much yet, so that's fine. Hedler? Would that be um, the change in tangential velocity? I'm not gonna, I'm, it would technically be the derivative of the tangential velocity, but I'm not going to put that one down yet. We'll, we'll deal with that more when we talk about it more. Jessica? Uh, tangential acceleration equals r alpha. 
the radius times the angular acceleration. Again, we haven't talked about those much, but it's a good time to put them in. I'm also going to put in that it's simply equal to the net force in the tangential direction. The mass times the tangential acceleration is equal to the net force in the tangential direction. That's another way you can find the tangential acceleration. That is our table of friends. A lot of the stuff that we have to review today was actually added in our table of friends. For example, Newton's second law, the net force equals mass and acceleration, where both force and acceleration are vectors. However, the concept of equilibrium was not. What does it mean for an object to be in equilibrium? We should. Wants to help her out. Benedict. Uh, that's when the acceleration is zero. Right. I don't want to start there. I agree with that, but that's not where I want to start. Net force. The net force is equal to zero. Therefore, because that's equal to mass times the acceleration, the acceleration is equal to zero. So an object in equilibrium, please describe it means the motion of the object in equilibrium. Deeds. Um, it is not accelerating. Therefore. That's not, okay, listen to what he just said because you need to realize what he just said was not correct. Say it again, Deeds, it's fun. It's not accelerating. Therefore? Oh, there are no forces acting upon it. Okay. That's what you said, right? So the net force acting upon it is zero. That doesn't mean that there aren't any forces acting on it. It simply means when you add all the forces together, they add up to zero. My question, however, uh, Mr. Reed, was describe the motion of the object. Yes, it's not accelerating, but I need a little bit more. Right, that's. <laughs> okay, okay, he's just thinking. Sorry. What are, what's constant? So it's either at a constant velocity or it's not moving. That's what it means to be in equilibrium. The acceleration is equal to zero, therefore it's um, either moving at a constant velocity or not moving at all. Let's see, we have the concept of friction. We have equations for friction. Please give me an equation for friction, Mr. Lowe. Uh, the force of kinetic friction is equal to A times force What are the dimensions on the coefficient of friction? Young. Um, Does not have any. So the force of kinetic friction is equal to mu k times the force normal. More equations for friction. Force of static friction is less than or equal to the force of coefficient of static friction times force normal. I'm also going to write this one down, although we really don't need it, which is to say that the force of static friction maximum is equal to mu s times force normal. That's sort of built into the equation we have here, but it's just an important thing to realize that the maximum is going to be equal to mu s times the force normal. What does the less than or equal sign mean in this equation? Michael? Yeah, but what, why is it, like, the force of kinetic friction is always equal to mu s times, or mu k times force normal, rather the force of static friction is less than or equal to, I'm asking why is it less than or equal to? Because it's not necessarily Because the force of static friction isn't always going to be at the maximum. Basically what happens is the force of static friction adjusts to prevent motion. And so it will adjust, it will increase or decrease to prevent the object from moving. Don't forget that we have inclines. So when we have an incline, we want to break the force of gravity into its components. We're going to sum the forces in the perpendicular direction and sum the forces in the parallel direction. We have force of gravity parallel and perpendicular. We went through that in class. Whenever you have forces, class, you should start by drawing. After you draw the free body diagram, you should. Break forces into components. After you break forces into components. Redraw the free body diagram, bless you. Then you should. Then you should. Then you should. You just keep summing the forces, okay? Each time you sum the forces, you have to identify, David. Um, the positive direction. Okay, one important thing to realize is when you sum the forces, you've got to identify 
the positive direction. This is especially true when there's a pulley, for example. You need to identify the positive direction whenever there's a pulley. Something else you need to identify. Benedict. Um, if uh, you got to identify your, uh, uh, whether your uh, sort of support is like the whole like, the system. The object or objects you're summing the forces on. And it's not quite included in what we said here, but it's close. Heather? You have to identify the direction you're summing the forces in. You have to identify which direction you are summing the forces in. Um, great. Now, what is it that makes it so that you can sum the forces on multiple objects? When can you? What has to be true about the objects in order to be able to sum the forces on more than one object? Heather. Uh, true, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you will be able to sum the forces on multiple objects, even if they are attached to one another. Deeds. They have to kind of like accelerate together. They have to have the same acceleration. Okay. So, whenever you sum the forces, if you're going to do it on the whole thing, that's going to be equal to the mass total times the acceleration. That acceleration needs to be the same. If the acceleration is not the same, that you cannot sum the forces on all of them. Chapter six, whenever you sum the forces on circular motion, you're gonna sum the forces in the indirection, that's equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration or mass times the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. The centripetal force. Three things I have to remember about the centripetal force. Jessica, what is one? It's in the indirection. Um, close. It has to do with part of it. Isha? The indirection is positive. The indirection is positive. In is positive, therefore out is negative. What else? Two more. Uh, come. It's not a new force. Number one, it's not a new force. Lastly, one more. Uh, Josh? never in a free body diagram. Ah. Let's see. In college prep physics, the tangential acceleration was always equal to zero whenever we were talking about centripetal acceleration. Note, tangential acceleration is not going to always be equal to zero. Sometimes you will be dealing with centripetal acceleration and tangential acceleration both at the same time. Lastly, we have resistive forces, the force of drag. We have two of them. Resistance force equals negative B times V. What is B called, Min uh, Minji? B, oh, um, some proportionality. Proportionality. Uh, Sicarelli? Constant. The proportionality constant. Uh, we also have the resistance force equals one half capital D rho A V squared. In this equation, Sam, what is it? D. The drag constant. What is? What are its dimensions? Oh, uh, dimension? oh no, it's like kilograms times. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Shall we? It's dimensionless. It's also called the drag coefficient. Helps you remember it's not it's uh, matchless. Rho in this this song. Um, density. density of what? The medium. the medium that it's going through. A land. The cross sectional area. Cross sectional area. Please define. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the area that travels through the medium. I need a little bit more. I agree with that, but I need a little more, Jay. The area presented by the object and that's perpendicular to the velocity and V clearly is the velocity. Uh, you need to be aware of the limits on this. For example, drawing a free body diagram, figuring out what the acceleration is at the beginning and at the, at, at the end, which brings us to if you drop an object, it will eventually reach just... Um, it'll reach terminal velocity. What, when does it reach terminal velocity? When... 
terminal velocity is reached when it's falling at the same constant rate. I agree with that, but I need a little bit more. Uh, Carol. Um, I'm going to say, under most circumstances, but you could have something reaching terminal velocity when it itself has, like you can have a rocket reach terminal velocity, right? So in that particular case, you would also have a, a force of the thrust of the rockets. So it's not necessarily just that the, the force, um, the force of gravity and the resistive force will be the same, because there can be instances where you have other forces involved. So it's when the net force equals zero, hence the acceleration equals zero. 